tomorrow. How happy are y'all to see me? I know y'all are. Here we go. Let's have some fun here. Floor for questions. We'll start with the players and then finish with Coach Mulkey. Please raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. I don't have an opening statement. So. <laughs> this is for Angel. Angel, you, you were gone for four games. What did you see in this team when you were gone, when you were watching him, and tonight when you got on the floor with him, like, Wow, they've, they've, they've grown up a lot in four games. Yeah, they can obviously play without me. Um, just coming back and doing whatever it takes to win, and I did as much as I could t today. We have a lot of leadership with outside of me, and seeing this team grow from when I wasn't here really shows a lot, and I'm really happy for this team and where we're at right now. Angel, last year at the Final Four, I remember you saying you need a Kim Mulkey in your life. Do you still feel that way today, and why or why not? I'm going to say that today, tomorrow, next year, to the day I die, and that's just how I feel. And I'm at LSU because of Kim Mulkey, and that's, that's how I feel. Hi, sorry. Um, Angel, how did it feel to be back on the floor? It felt great. I mean, it was a long two weeks, or well, a week and a half, two weeks to be away from the team. Um, taking time to yourself is uh, really important. I feel like that's just something that was important and resetting and refocusing within the team. I'm just happy to be back. And th this place was amazing tonight, and I'm just happy to be here with them. One more. Um, you said you know, you've had a lot of time to yourself. Um, but what have you learned about yourself in the time you were away? Not what I learned about myself. I want people to realize that I'm not just an athlete. I'm a human. human too. <coughs> I go through things. We all go through things. And just being able to have so many people that were super supportive to me in this past week and a half really showed me a lot and who really cares for me. And when you up, everybody love you. When you down, you see who really love you. So just being able to have such supportive people that were here for me and through a tough time for me was, was really important. Uh, both of you can answer this, really. Um, a win against a top 10 team. That has not been done by this program in a while. What does that say about this team and how you use this as momentum going forward? What y'all going to say now, obviously. I mean, we had our first game and people counted us out, of course, but we made it personal tonight. I think that coming together at a home court, um, knowing Virginia Tech, obviously, from the Final Four, I think that was beneficial, but it was about us tonight. I told them nobody comes in our house and takes, takes anything from us, and I think that we really worked hard and played together, and you see how many people were in double figures tonight, so obviously we just love playing together and playing team basketball. Um, I would say it's just been showing all the work that we've been putting in since the season started, um, playing together, but also how much of an – an advantage it is to have great guards that go in and rebound and defend and have that presence inside as well. Anissa, back here. Um, how much progress has this team made defensively and just how much was tonight kind of showing that progress? Um, we've made a, a lot of it's, – it's been great, honestly. The main focus tonight was defense. We know um, Amor – is a great player, and we knew that we had to stop her, but also stop Kitley. Um, just stopping all the other players as much as we possibly can, taking on that assignment. Uh, Anissa, you're obviously a very good player at your former school, but to play in a game like tonight, in an atmosphere like this, and an opponent like this, is this why you kind of came to LSU? Um, yes, I want to play against some of the best talent in, in the country, and play with some of the best teammates in the country as well. And I know that a lot of people said that what I did was at DePaul, but I could perform on any level, Period. and I showed that tonight. <laughs> okay. Anissa and Angel, um, obviously Michaela is an absolute problem out there. I mean, she does not play like her age. Um, just talk a bit about, you know, how she's not afraid of the moment and, you know, the, the fearlessness <laughs> that she plays with on a day-to-day -day basis, um, even, in your short, even in your tougher games like Colorado. Just 
talk a bit about you know what she's been to this team offensively and then obviously just as for team morale purposes yeah, her confidence is just amazing. Like you said, she's not a regular freshman. You don't see a freshman come in so confident and just being able to translate from high school to co to college. And she's she's done that. I mean, she's learned so much from us, and she's willing to learn. And she works hard. She gets, she sits in the gym, and she works on the things that she needs to work on. And I think that really helps our team because she knows her role, and she knows when her time is when it, when it comes. I would say Michaela is built for the moment. She works so hard every day. Like, she's a gym rat, and it shows every every night. Uh, Angel, what exactly changed after the first quarter? How did y'all flip the game and take over? Our defense, um, just being able to adjust. I mean, first time, big environment for a lot of us. Again, first game, of course, Colorado. But just being able to be back within the atmosphere of, of LSU in this program. So I think we adjusted really well. I mean, they, they had a lot of big shots in the first quarter, and I think we just really adjusted. Hey, Angel, for you. Uh, it can't share if you can, I'll share. It's up to you. But I just wanted to know who you might leaned on in the last week, week and a half. Who was, who was kind of that supportive cast for you? Who, who was there for you when you needed them? My mom, of course. But I talked to Shaq every day. He, we FaceTime every day. He checked on me. He called me every single day to make sure I was good. And he told me every day, like, this too shall pass, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. He's been here before. He knows what it takes. And just being able to have somebody like that was something that was really – Good for me. Um, he told me when I was right. He told me when I was wrong. Told me what I needed to do to get back to where I am. And I know he, we're gonna probably call. He's gonna call me after the game if he hasn't already. Guys, we got time for two more questions for the players. Anissa, um, you had a couple of breakout performances in the Caymans. How did that experience translate to your performance here tonight? Um, I would say honestly, playing with my team and going through the adversity that we did in the Caymans and that we've been going through for with Angel not being here, it just shows that we're resilient. We have each other back, and we're willing to take on the challenge. And I feel like I've been showing that, and I've been resilient, and my teammates have been as well. Angel, welcome back. Um, <coughs> you mentioned earlier uh, the importance of having time to reset. To what extent do you feel comfortable sharing, maybe just generally or conceptually, what you felt you needed or to reset or did reset? My mental health is the most important thing before anything, and I'm going to make sure I'm okay before anything because I don't want to cause anything harm or any cancer within in the locker room. So being able to take a reset to myself, like I said before, I am human. I'm not just an athlete, and that's okay to do. Pros do it all the time. So whatever stories that were wrote and written, don't believe everything you read. I mean, I'm back, and I'm happy, and I'm here, and I'm moving forward, and I'm going to take this team and help take this team as far as I can. Good job, guys. Questions for Coach? Hi, you were down after that first quarter. What adjustments did you make offensively and defensively to uh, take control of that game? Just challenge them a little bit more to be a little bit more physical, a little bit more in passing lanes. Um, any shot they took, make sure you had a hand in their face, make sure if a screen was set, you, you knew your assignment. We're not a polished product, but what you saw tonight on the defensive end was physical play. You saw some athleticism. You saw some tough girls, but it's not a polished product. We just, I guess you'd say in the country, we bowed our neck and we, we, we got after it. Yeah, Coach, back here. Um, just coming from, obviously, after the Colorado loss, you said, you know, the toughness, the physicality was important for you. How pleasing was it to see this team uh, have that toughness and physicality? And then also, um, how can you describe Haley Van Lith on defense tonight? Well, <clears throat> if you don't even compare it to Colorado, just the things we've been through and what you saw out there, you had to go, wow. They hadn't really been on the floor together. Wow when they're on the floor for a longer period of time and it all becomes a thing of beauty, how special can we be? But you saw happiness out there. You saw kids high-fiving out there. You saw when we got behind kids lifting other kids up. You saw some roles that now have changed a little bit. Um, I thought Flaget and Haley Fan Lith were your unsung heroes in this game tonight. You ask Haley to guard a more for that long, I don't think she came out of the game. I don't think Amore ever took a breather. 
and Haley is, you know, just tough. She's fighting that plantar fasciitis in her foot, and she's learned a new position. I don't know that Haley understands her value to our team tonight because she's so used to scoring so many points. But with scouts in the stands, I told her, they need to see you play the point guard like you did tonight. Distribute the ball. Control the flow of the game. That's hard to do when you've been um, the off-ball position most of your career and you're the one taking the most shots uh, and doing it really with her foot hurting her. I thought Flage, but I've thought this about Flage for a while now. Flage came in as a freshman and thought when she didn't shoot the ball well or score points, she had a bad night. Flage's not even thinking about that anymore. If she gets a good shot, great. If she goes in and gets offensive boards, she gets rebounds. Her all-around game, including defense, it's it's a it's just. And I told her that. I said, "Wow, Flage, your all-around game is is something right now." Hey, Coach, over here. Um, a couple of weeks ago, you said you needed one player pretty much to step up on defense and just be there consistently. Um, do you think Anissa Morrow has kind of stepped into that role? She had three steals, two blocks well, tonight. Well, Anissa had to guard Kitley a lot tonight. And what did she do? What did she do? She didn't. She pulled the chair out from under. She got in there and, and wouldn't let her, you know, just take her down there. She would get deflections and she would get steals. Um, Anissa, uh, she moves quick. I mean, she's, she's not going to get buried down there. And uh, I just think her uh, ability to move a lot – creates a lot of steals for us. Hey, Coach, as you know, it was a top 10 matchup. You had the opportunity to win your 700th career game. Can you talk a little bit about the crowd and what effect they might have had on this matchup tonight? Our crowd, I thought, was excellent. Considering it was a television game, it's raining outside, and it was 8 o'clock, I really worried that the crowd would stay home and be lazy. They were here. The students were here. And isn't that fun? Look how crowded this room is. Y'all are here. That speaks volumes, um, and we're, we're most appreciative. Hey, Coach, in the middle over here. Since Angel's been back, have you noticed a change in mindset or demeanor with her as opposed to earlier in the season um, since she's been back? Angel is um, one of the best players I've coached, and I've coached many. And Angel is Angel. You saw her tonight, so you can probably answer that. I don't have to answer it because what I saw on that floor tonight was special by everyone that got to play, and it was absolutely wonderful. Coach, in the back. Obviously, it's early in the season, but is this the type of game that you've really wanted to see from your team, knowing that they're playing together, playing the defensive type of basketball that you – pride yourself in as a coach? Yes. What I wanted to see, I knew it wouldn't be a, a polished product, and we're not. But what I wanted to see is fight. I wanted to see uh, team chemistry. I wanted to see sharing the ball. I wanted to see everybody pick each other up, even help those young ones when they're out there and they're a little nervous. And it's, it, you know, we feed off of each other. We're a, a team of emotion. I'm a coach of emotion, and you feed off of that. And I just saw a lot of that tonight. They get you excited as a coach. Uh, coach, how do uh, Anissa and Reese play off each other? Uh, well, Jock, you saw it. And, and they just getting started. They really don't know yet. We, we didn't run a lot of sets tonight. You just don't run a lot if you don't have to. But there are things that with those two in the ball game. Angel was a, a, a rebound short of a double-double. She hadn't said a word about it. She's looking and going, knees, 15 boy. She doesn't care. Um, you just want to win. You want to win. But they will get better and better on passing to each other in our high-low because Nice can bring people out to the three-point line. We didn't even run any of that tonight. It was just a lot of on-ball screens that we ran. They went to their 2-3 zone, and we uh, basically kept running the pick and roll against the 2-3 zone. Uh, but if we have to go uh, with our high-low look, I just think Morrow can open it up in there for Angel. I think Angel is one of the better passers we have on the team. She could actually lead the team in assist now if she's doubled or triple teamed. 
It's different than Ladesia, but it could be just as good if Well, Ladesia didn't have the three-point shot. Uh, Morrow does. Morrow will, will pull the trigger out there. Uh, Ladesia was mid-range, high post, foul line area, baseline area. But at the top, Morrow, is, you're going to have to come out and guard her. And she takes you off the dribble. She's, she just, she's strong off the dribble. Hi, Coach. Um, how would you assess Angel's performance tonight? Angel's? Mm -hmm. Oh, proud of her. Uh, not really the production proud. Just proud. Proud that how she handled herself. Proud of how she was back to the Angel. Everybody knows. Proud that her teammates embraced her. Proud how she treated everybody. She loves seeing everybody. This is, this is where she's comfortable. And um, you saw everything. I mean, so positive. There's, there's nothing but positive things about what happened on that floor tonight. After the game, you had uh, the two of you had a long embrace. Mm -hmm. um, what did you say to her? Something that probably I won't share, but it was from my heart, and something she's heard many times from my heart. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey Kim, uh, I was wondering if you might just speak on just the importance of, of athletes when they need to just kind of take in that moment for themselves and, and addressing their, you know, their their mental health. Mental health. I don't want you to think Angel was trying to tell you that, okay? But we all, coaches included, have to take a deep breath. Do you know we we do this sport for nine months out of the year? We start in what October and we finish in April. Is that nine months? What other sport does that in college? We all have to have breaks. They're going to take three days off because of finals coming up and all that. It's it's just it's grinding, and we all need it. I need it. The kids need it. Uh, mental health is talked about a lot now in our society. And it's new to a lot of coaches. So that's why we have the people employed that know more about helping student athletes than a coach does. So you get them the help they need and you get out of the way because there's a certain patient, or not patient, what do you call it? You can't get involved. Um, so, um, it's in the workplace, it's in college athletics, it's in society. Kim, over here, um, Nigel Dyson, uh, KL KLB Sports. Uh, just talk a bit about, you know, I kind of asked the girls already about Michaela, but just her ability to kind of, you know, no matter the situation, no matter the opponent, she's been even keel in that consistent score for you guys, and she's just so happy to see, you know, other people succeed as well. Um, just. What has she added to your team, I guess? Just talent. She's just a talent. When's the last freshman you've seen in this program do what she does? Uh, when's the last freshman you've seen come in here and be in a rotation or a starting five? She's just talented. Is she um, um, going to make my state? Yeah, she's a freshman. I took her out a couple times early to, to, you know, just get her attention. But she knows she's going right back in. Uh, there's so many parts of her game that she has no clue how good she can be. And I think Flaget helps her every day. I think those kids that, that just play after practice is over against each other, man, they're just ballers. You almost have to tell them, y'all need to go to the house. Get off the floor. Got time for a couple more questions in here, guys. Kim, you said yesterday you didn't schedule this. was part of the ACC-SEC challenge. But now that it's over with, fanfare, the win, is it a nice shot in the arm before you, those girls had the final exams? Any win is a nice shot in the arm, any win. And um, there's a lot of things that would be a shot in the arm. Having Angel backs a shot in the arm. Uh, watching them play at a um, level for a long period of time tonight was just, just good. It, it was just good. And... Um, there's so many things I could think of that are, that's a shot in the arm. Yeah, Kim, right here. Uh, 
Do you think, I mean, at one time in his life, Shaq had all this come at him in a hurry, the celebrity, and then trying to be a basketball player. Do you think he, he was actually ideal person to talk to her about walking her through this and, 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 and everything coming at you and how you have to separate things? You know, I, I probably am not one to know their personal relationship. I know he signed her to a Reebok deal, and so she's very appreciative of that. And so there obviously is a relationship there. She told you uh, Shaq is LSU through and through. He loves this place. And anybody that loves this place is going to always uh, help everybody. Um, and I love that. I love that. How many former athletes will do that for current athletes? Probably not a lot. Um, but Shaq is, Shaq is, he's a, he's an icon. He's a great ambassador for all of us at LSU. I mean, when he walks in a building, you can't miss him. Uh, if you don't see his big body, you see that big personality. He's funny. And uh, I would imagine um, he was awesome for her. Final question here. Coach, you mentioned earlier in the week when you were asked about getting to 700, and you mentioned how big of a role all the players were in your career. What did it mean to you after the game to see so many personal messages from your former players over the years? I'm trying not to get emotional. Uh, I didn't know that was taking place. I was trying to go to the student section to thank them for being here tonight. And my daughter and son just kept saying, Mom, stay right here. You won your 700th game. They've done something for you. So I stayed right there. And they said they made me look up there. Um, it It's touching. Um, it's um, some of those people on that screen I haven't seen since I coached them. They have children now. They're married. Um, it's touching because, see, I've always told them these are the greatest years of your life in college, but you don't know it yet. Wait until you're married. You have to pay bills. You have to change a diaper, and you're going to look back and go, that woman was right. These are the greatest years of your life in college. And when you coach as long as I have and others do, not all of them are going to leave liking you. Not all of them are going to say glowing things. That's to be expected, too. But what you try to do is you try to send them home with a degree. And that's what I'm most proud of. In my f ever how many years y'all figured out of coaching, if a young lady finished playing for me in that uniform, she went home with a degree. And that is so important to me. I didn't have parents that went to college. They went straight from high school to, you know, working. I was the only one that went to college. I never wanted them to pay for an education. That's the only thing I can promise young people is I'm going to help you get that degree. I don't care how long it takes. That is that that makes me feel most proud. The victories I told Scott the other night. I don't know what my record is. What is my record? 700 and what? 113. Okay. Okay. Um, that just means I've been around a long time. It means I've coached some of the greatest. That's it. But it makes me feel good to see my ADs up there. Those athletic directors, my, the athletic director that hired me and gave me my first job, the athletic director that was there my entire time except for a few years at Baylor. And then to see Leon Barmore, you know, who I worked for, and he taught me everything about this game that I know. Um, that's when I got emotional when he got up there because um, that man is a legend, too. And um, it was touching. But I was most proud of my basketball team to hell with my 700 victories, okay? Y'all have a good one.